let's start this project on part five here. So I've done parts one through four and ended up getting, this is the amount of money that I can spend on a mortgage payment or it's my mortgage payment allowance. Now this will be different for everyone depending on what you put for part one. So we have $1,540 is how much we can contribute each month towards this mortgage. And a mortgage is a loan because we will have a balance that we need to pay off and we'll pay that balance each month. So periodic payments and we're reducing the balance, that's a loans situation. So in the finance calculator, let's find the loans calculator. So we have, this is the loans calculator and we're solving for the present value or the loan amount that we can afford because we have the payment or the deposit amount, which is the, in this case, 1,540. The interest rate we were given to be 4.8%. Enter as a decimal, 0 0.048. The number of withdrawals or payments that we are doing is 12 because we're doing it each month. And then the number of years, we're doing a 30 year mortgage. So we hit 30, we hit enter, click off the screen, and we get that we can afford a $293,520 loan. And the next part is saying that we have $30,000 saved up that we can use as a down payment. So this is an additional amount of money that we can use to buy the house. So we can add this to the loan amount that we are able to afford. So we take our loan amount, which I'm just going to copy and paste it into Desmos, remove the comma, and we add 30,000 to that. So this is the new house purchasing price that we can afford. Now let's say I went on one of these uh, housing sites and found a house for sale in my area for $300,000. So this is the purchase price that I'm going to use and I'll leave the description and, and everything of the house up to you. So now I want to fill everything into an amortization table. So we first start with the purchase price, which is the price that we've got in part seven here. So that's the $300,000 and then the down payment that is the thirty thousand dollars hit enter and we calculate our loan amount which is now two hundred seven thousand dollars because we take away the down payment from the purchase price because that's what we have left and then in order to pay off this loan in 30 years with this apr we have to contribute or we have to pay one thousand four hundred sixteen dollars each month now this is different than the mortgage payment allowance that I found earlier in part four. This is specific to this house, this purchase price, this down payment. So we want to fill out the table. Similar to the amortization table we've made before, we enter in the beginning balance, which is the 270,000, hit enter. So that's the beginning balance. And then the payment amount, that remains the same always. That is the $1,416.60. Now we could have typed that in, but let's just use our cell referencing and get uh, more practice with it. So we're referencing a cell, so we type equals, and this is cell F3. Now again, we're gonna be drag filling all this stuff down. So when we drag fill, this would drag down to F4 and then F5 then F6. So to tell Excel to stay on F3 or not to drag down, we put a dollar sign in front of the three. I hit enter and we can see that value in the cell is the value in cell F3. And now the two interest amount is the amount of interest that happens each month according to the previous month's balance. Now we have the annual interest rate is 0 0.048 and we already have the monthly interest rate calculated in cell D4 for us right here, which is really nice. So the amount of interest that happens each month is the monthly interest rate, 0 0.004, times the previous month's balance. So we have equals the previous month's balance, cell E9 times the monthly interest rate, which is cell D4. Now, it, we want cell E9 to fill drag when we, when we drag down the equation, but we don't want cell D4 to drag as well. So we can just put a dollar sign in front of the four and that tells Excel to stay on that cell D4. 
hit enter this is the amount of interest that happens in the first month one thousand eighty dollars so we make a payment towards our balance of one thousand four hundred sixteen dollars one thousand eighty of it goes to interest this is money the profit that's going straight to the bank or the lender whoever it is so the amount that goes to principal is the leftover amount so we want to find the difference of our payment amount to the amount that went towards interest so this is equal to we typing an equation we're finding the difference between cell b10 and c10 so b10 minus c10 10. We hit enter, and this is the amount that goes towards the principal, $336.60. So this is how much we pay off the balance by. So the new balance after the first month is the previous month, take away the amount that went towards the principal. So the previous month's balance is E9 minus the amount that went towards principal, D10. Hit enter, and this is the new balance for the first month. So we want everything to drag fill for, we're going to be doing this for 30 years, and we're doing this each month. So 30 years, 12 times a month, 30 times 12 is 360. So we're going to be doing this for 360 months. So we just highlight months zero and one so with the thick white cross you just click and drag till it's highlighted and it looks like that and we can drag fill the little green corner box make sure our mouse is the thin black cross and we click and drag and we see that number on the right we're gonna have to do this for a little while drag until we see that number on the right is 360. right now we're about 250 and we have now 360 you gotta find it there we go so this is month 360 here so if we scroll all the way back up we can highlight with the thick white cross you just click at the payment cell b10 and drag to e10 let go and we have all this highlighted and we can drag fill by just double clicking the little green box make sure we have our mouse as the thin black cross double click now when we scroll all the way down, we should have our ending balance is close to zero. Now it might be off by a little bit just because of rounding here and there uh, in Excel. But if you're within you know, a couple of dollars, that's good. But here we have exactly zero, which is great. Because that means that after 360 months, we have paid off our balance. And we can touch on some of these last few questions here. A lot of them can be done without Excel, but just to get better with our Excel knowledge, let's look at how we can figure out or solve these problems using Excel. So this first part here is asking if we keep the house for the entire life of the loan, how much will we pay in total? Now this is a great way to utilize the sum function. So we can type equals, we wanna sum all of our contributions towards the loan. So everything that we paid or all the money that we put into this loan we want to add together so we do equals because it's an equation sum sum that's the sum function and we do a parenthesis and now we want to sum all of our payments so we can sum all of our payments by using a range of cells so we might have to scroll up and see what is the beginning of the range so the very first payment is on cell b10 so let's scroll down. So we're starting our range at cell B10. So at cell B10, and we're going all the way to cell B369. It's very far down. Cell B369. And we see that now that highlights all of these cells here. So that's highlighting that entire range that we just put in. And we can see it's all highlighted from the very first payment all the way to the last payment. So that's gonna add up all of those payments. And if we hit enter, then we get about $509,000. However, this isn't all of what we contributed to the loan because we also contributed the down payment, which is $30,000. So what we can do in Excel is double click this, 
So this value right here is adding up all of the, our payments, but we can also add, so plus the $30,000, hit enter. Now that is the total contributions on this house that we've made. All the payments of the loan plus the down payment. And we can do something similar for the interest payments. The interest payments is actually a little bit less work that we have to do because there's no initial interest down payment. We just have to add up all of the interest payments that happened over the 360 months. So we do equals, we're gonna be summing all of the two interest payments. So sum, do a parenthesis, and we already have the uh, range in mind. So we're going from cell C10 colon, which tells Excel to do a range, all the way to cell C369. We close the parenthesis, hit enter. And if we scroll all the way back up, we can see we start with this cell here, the cell C10, that's the very first two interest amount and we scroll back down and that is the total sum of our interest payments and now excel is already trying to find patterns and it's recognizing uh, what we're doing and it it trying to find the difference between these two the two interest amounts and the payment amounts however we will not need that so we can just delete that the next part is asking us if we want to sell the house after five years, how much will we still owe? So five years, we have to think about how many months is that because our table is by months. Five years is 60 months because 12 months in a year. So five times 12 is 60. So if we scroll up to month 60 right here, this has all the information that we're gonna need. So we're asked to figure out how much we will still owe. Or in other words, what is the remaining balance on this loan? Well, it's just that 247,000. So that's all this part is asking for, part 11. And then on the last part is saying, if you sell the house after five years, how much equity of the house will you have? Now there's multiple ways to figure this one out. Equity means how much of the house do you own or how much has gone towards the principal already? So what we can do is see how much has gone towards the principal or how much have we put into the actual value of the house or how much have we reduced our balance by. So what we could do is we could just see what are all the two principal payments. So we're going to be doing a sum and we type equals sum, do the open parenthesis. And we want to see where do we start? So we're starting at for all the two principal payments because when we say on this first payment is $336 to the principal, that's that's saying that we got $336 of equity. That's ownership of the house that we got in that first month. So this is cell D10. So we're going cell D10 and we're doing a range. So colon all the way down to cell D69 because that's in this month 60 here. So D69 and then close parenthesis. Now again, when we do this, we hit enter, we have $22,000 that we have made um, towards the principal. So these are all of the two principal values added up. So that's how much equity we have from the payments. However, we also have the down payment, which we have to take into account. That is just straight equity. When we first purchased the house, we already had $30,000 of equity, or we paid $30,000 of the house already. So we can add $30,000 to all the two principal payments. And we hit enter, and that's how much equity we have of the house after five years.